What's up guys, it's Trevor with Embers Fireplaces. Today we have a new pa, 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 top five video. We're doing, if you haven't guessed it, we're doing top five skillets, baby. Let's go. Okay, so we're talking skillets. Skillets have become super, super popular lately. Um, a lot of stuff to the market. So it can be very confusing on what you should buy. That's why we're here. That's why this video exists. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a ton when you guys do that. Follow us on TikTok, follow us everywhere. Smash that like button. It sounds silly and repetitive, but it actually helps a lot. So if you don't mind, just go ahead and throw, throw us a thumbs up, thumbs up if you agree. It deserves a thumbs up. Also, if you're in the Denver, Colorado area, come to our showroom today and uh, you can check out all these skillets for yourself. Okay, so there's obviously stuff like Blackstone. They're probably one of the most popular skillets. They are not in this review. Uh, we'll probably take a lot of heat for that, but they're just a little bit below like the price point of what, what you'd find in our store. They're more for like the big box type stores, things like that. They're great. Uh, really nice little grill. I think they're a great little starter uh, skillet. Um, they, they're not great for built-in. They don't, they're really designed for cart models. Now, there's a lot of guys on TikTok and YouTube that cook on a Blackstone that have configured it into an outdoor kitchen, but everything we're reviewing today can either be on a cart or a true built-in application for a, a, like a true outdoor kitchen. So that's the type of stuff we're reviewing. Uh, real quick, before we get into it too, I'll show you some accessories here. If you're not interested in a full skillet setup, uh, there's other solutions. So if you don't want a standalone skillet, like for example, this is a Heston power burner that's built into an outdoor kitchen and it can double as a skillet top. So if you just want to do skillet cooking every once in a while, you could do something like this. Boom, now you have a skillet. And a lot of the barbecue manufacturers out there, I'd say a good chunk of them, offer skillet uh, insets. So you could do a skillet inset uh, accessory, they're kind of, they kind of work. Sometimes they're a little skinny to really do a lot of good cooking on. And it's definitely annoying changing your cooking grates in and out. But if you, if you just want to try it here and there, sort of get your feet wet, see if you like it, you can do that. All right, let's get to standalone skillets. Okay, so I would say almost every built-in skillet uh, is usually about 30 inches. So it's usually a 30 inch inset. Like I said, you can do them freestanding around a cart. These three here, we have the Blaze skillet, we have the Sky Coyote skillet, and the brand new brand that will be debuting their grills here shortly is brand new. Um, a lot of innovation behind the brand, really excited about their barbecues, especially their grill heads. A lot of cool new stuff coming out, so you have to stay tuned, subscribe to our channel to see all the cool new wildfire stuff, and we have the wildfire griddle. There's three of them here, but these, are gonna be in the five, four-ish category, rated number five and four. I don't really have a direct rating on them because they are very similar. One of the things with skillet cooktops is they're all very, very similar in a way until we get into some unique features, which we'll be talking about with some of our other grills. But you essentially have a big stainless steel plate, two burners underneath them, high, hot and low, variable speed, Variable speed. <laughs> Was it a lawnmower? No. Variable heat, I guess you'd say. And a simple clean out. So the, there's really not a lot to these griddles besides just heavy duty stainless steel, good quality burners, good warranties. But there are some differences um, with each one that I want to talk about slightly. So the Blaze one, we cook on this one and you can tell, I mean, it's filthy. But the Blaze one, their cart, I'd say they have the most unique cart. So if you wanted this freestanding, you can do a built-in or freestanding, they have the full wraparound sort of shelving for the cart, which I think makes it the most unique and super cool. Um, they have these cool little condiment, little shelving in here, which is kind of kind of fun. Now, if you're not doing a built-in, that wouldn't really apply to you. So that's sort of the blaze. Now the Coyote, the way they're set up is one of the things I like about the Coyote is they have this pull out grease tray. Now, I think that's important. I'm gonna talk about it as we get into the review a little bit more. Cooking on skillets myself 
one of the most overlooked features is how the heck do you clean it? Because nothing is messier than a griddle. I promise you nothing's gonna be messier. So the way you can clean a griddle, the functionality of that is super important to me personally. In fact, I'm gonna demonstrate how important it is that these clean up well, because I'm gonna be cooking on our number one griddle. I'm cooking on it today to show you some of the advantages of griddle cooking and why a griddle can be useful in your outdoor kitchen. So stay tuned for that. Also, the Coyote has a couple, you know, side drawers, pull out drawers, side shelves. And again, you can do it built in too, and then none of, nothing on the cart would apply. All right, now let's talk about the Wildfire. So the Wildfire, again, like the other two, we have a nice little clean out, removable clean out tray that's important. Now, what I like about Wildfire, now I'll be talking about this when I review their grills, but I really like their control panel. So they've decided to do uh, a black stainless, but it's not like a painted on stainless. It's actually, uh, I don't know the science behind it, but they were telling me at one of the shows that it's actually cooked. Cooked is not the right word. That is definitely not the right term, but it's, it's in the manufacturing process that this black color gets applied. So this is not paint. So it doesn't scratch off like paint. It's gonna wear out and, or it's gonna wear and really stay that nice black color. So their control panel is actually super unique and I really like this little belly bar here. I just like the front end design of the Wildfire the best. I think it has the cleanest, like most polished look out of these griddles here. Now, like I said, they're very, very similar in size, very similar in functionality. Uh, two burners, you can see one of our guys broke this when he was putting it together, son of a gun. Uh, very, very similar. Here's what I tell you, how to choose between these two or these three really. I would say because they're so close, uh, whatever other brand you're going with like in your outdoor kitchen, like if you're building a Blaze grill, like if you're doing a Blaze LTE or Blaze Pro, get the matching Blaze griddle. If you're doing a Coyote S series grill or a Coyote C series grill, just get everything that matches because you're not gonna see a huge difference in performance. I think these are gonna perform very, very similar. You don't necessarily have to over-research it or overthink it. Same thing, if you're doing a wildfire uh, outdoor kitchen, obviously you're gonna want all that matching because that their front, their front control panels are so unique with that black stainless. So I would say you're splitting hairs with these three, really. Get which, whatever one you're doing the outdoor kitchen with. So. Hopefully that clears that up a little bit and can save you some time in your research. All right, should we get to number three? Let's go. Coming in at number three is gonna be the DCS griddle side burner combo. All right, so this I thought was kind of unique. I did include it in the review. You can do it as a complete skillet or uh, the skillet side burner combo. This would be if like you're trying to save space or like I said, you just wanna griddle here and there. Um, the reason this one's rated pretty high is I just like the versatility of it. Um, it's made in Mexico and it has some upgrades. So you can see we have a hot surface ignition going on. Now, if, if you're not familiar with hot surface ignitions, you probably saw in some of my, <clears throat> some of my other videos, if you watch my barbecue videos, it's essentially like a cigarette lighter. So that's why it's glowing like that, like that you see in a car. So um, it's more reliable long-term. You can see I just turned this one on. It's gonna have less issues down the road as far as uh, long-term you know, warranties and not, the igniter's not working, things like that. And then also, I think it prevents like sort of that big sort of whew, like if you have gas buildup or anything, it doesn't really happen with the, those igniters. And then on their skillet, again, they have a nice little clean out. And then right here, so it does have a flash tube here. So even though I just talked about the burners being reliable, um, you can throw a match down this and manually ignite this if for some reason you lost power or your burner was out for some weird reason. And again, you can do this as a complete griddle or this combo like, he, like this. You know who else, this is really rare to see this, but you, who else makes this combo? And it's a brand we just picked up as well, kind of like Wildfire, is Twin Eagles. So Twin Eagles, uh, then you're gonna go to US made product. It's gonna be more expensive than, than this, but almost very similar. Kind of like how those are similar. The Twin Eagles and the DCS are gonna be similar too, except you're gonna go to a US made product and they have their Teppanaki, I think is how they say it. Their full 30 inch griddle as well, 
we'll have reviews coming on, the, on that soon. So you can include the Twin Eagles brand in the number three category too, along with DCS. I'm really squishing a lot of griddles into this review. All right, should we get to number two? All right, time to get to number two. Number two is gonna be the Lynx Espado. How do you say it, Tate? Asado? Asado cooktop. Sad to say, the Lynx Asado cooktop is not here. But don't worry, it's at my house. So that's the, the, the griddle that's at my house. I know what you're thinking. Trevor, the number two ranked griddle is at your house, not number one? I'll explain that in a bit. I talked about why cleaning is so important, and I think that's one of the most important features to a griddle is that it's gonna clean easy. We did a video clip when I displayed my outdoor kitchen. Chris, roll the footage of the review of the number two Lynx Asado, and I'll tell you my favorite features about that. All right, why did I go with the Lynx Skillet Top? There's a couple things that set the Lynx apart compared to uh, the other brands that kind of do this traditional skillet style. A few things, so one, a lot of the skillet tops that are out there, you kind of have to use tools to open it up. What's cool about this is it lifts just, it literally just lifts right up and it has like a cool little kickstand, almost like a hood of your car, so you can get into here. So Lynx sort of claim to fame is they're all Trident burners. Now what's cool about infrared heat is it gets hotter than you know what. But the problem with that is sometimes, especially with a skillet, you can get it way too hot and then you're gonna be burning everything. So the, the infrared burners turn down to 300 degrees. So they have a lot of variability with their heat output, which is really gonna help with performance. But more importantly, check this out. There's probes in here and these probes um, read the, the heat, the temperature in here and will auto-modulate these burners. So your burners are never gonna get too hot. So here's the tip. Don't get your skillet too hot because it's really hard to cool it back down and you're gonna be ob obliterating and burning everything. All your grease, all your butter, you're just gonna annihilate it. So the Lynx probes really help stop that from happening. Now the other problem with skillets is what I learned with the Evo is they make a stinking mess. They are very messy. So you want something that is easy to clean. They're a grease trap system. Not only does it easily just pull out of the front, but it's two separate pieces. And the reason for that, we just had a ton of rain, so these are soaking wet. The reason for that is they can fit in the dishwasher. So these are designed to separate to fit in the dishwasher. So to me, I just think there's a lot of little attention to detail that uh, are really important. I didn't think it would be so hard to keep a skillet top clean. So here's a tip, get a skillet top, that's easy to clean, and those being able to go right in the dishwasher doesn't get any easier than that. So you can see the two big things for me, why it's at my house, um, is going to be the cleaning functionality of how everything goes in the dishwasher. I loved how the whole top came off and you could get to the burner super easy, and of course that those burners aren't gonna get too hot with that sort of patented all trident burner by Lynx. I think that's some of the best burners in town. In town, I mean like everywhere, not this town, but all over. That's why it's number two. All right, should we get to number one and actually do some cooking? Who's hungry? All right, time for number one, baby. It's gonna be the Evo cooktop. Now, I used to have this grill at my house, and you heard me talk about it a little bit in the Lynx review. Um, this is my number one griddle. I think it's my favorite griddle. It's most unique. Uh, what do I love about it? So many things. So many things. One, I love the round shape. So the round shape, you can see it's perfect for like an island. So that's why we have it in our island, in our indoor kitchen. So that's another thing. You can buy this as an indoor or an outdoor model. You can buy it as a cart model or built-in. Also because it's round, they sell this square accessory trim. So you can either buy this trim kit so you can cut around it square, or you can actually have your granite cut Ooh, it's hot, uh, have it cut so uh, it's gonna be round as well. You don't have to necessarily get this trim piece. What's so cool about the round design, I think it really promotes like a community feel. Like if usually when you're cooking skillet top cooking, it's usually you're doing something fun, you're doing something awesome, you're having people over, so people can kind of congregate around it, they can kind of pick off the skillet. Um, it's really, really conducive 
for community feel or community environment, especially when you can access all sides of the griddle. The only reason this wasn't, isn't in my house still is I talked about in my video, I have a railing right here. So the round just wasn't a great fit for my personal house. Now you can do it up against a railing, but I thought I'd give the Lynx one a try. But this is definitely a huge advantage when you can get all the way around this griddle. And I love that it sits up a little bit higher. And then we have this whole sort of trough, like a clean out trough here. And then over here, Chris, you can see we have our little grease traps. So everything's gonna dump in here and then drop into here. Now here's a tip from owning this grill. It comes with this cover, but you can see it doesn't cover that entire grease trap. So they sell an actual black cover, but the wind blows it away. It's not a good cover. Don't get that cover. You have to make sure that this trap is very tidy and clean because if the rain comes in or something and rain gets in here, you're gonna have problems. And so what I've done, what I've made the mistake of is I've kept this really, really clean, but I forgot to clean these buckets out and uh, they were full of grease. Well, what happened was it rained. The rain filled up those entire buckets because these holes are accessible from the water and then grease water overflowed onto my patio. Not good. So what I would do, here's a little tip. If you buy this grill, buy an extra set of these. That way when you're done cooking, a fresh set just goes in them always. So you're not gonna have grease spilling over or anything like that. So there's my tip on why it's so important for cleanup because I've made the mistake of not cleaning up very good and you run into major problems. This does have two burners, has an inner burner and an outer burner. I think again, talking about functionality, all the other ones being left to right, you either cook on the left side or the right side, having the two temperature zones, it's gonna give you more flexibility to do more things. This is a 30 inch diameter, which is very big, and or you can do a 25. All right, I talked about why you would want a skillet top. Obviously these are great, like I said, for bringing people together, very good for social environments. Obviously breakfast foods are gonna be wonderful on this pancakes, bacon, eggs, whatever. Uh, doing like a homemade chicken fried rice is really good. You know, get, get your cooked rice, put some eggs in it, kind of cook some chicken, stir fry it all together. Obviously, it works out great on a skillet. But today, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite things to cook on a skillet. And that's gonna be Wagyu steaks, baby. Now I'm gonna tell you why I like cooking Wagyu and I'm gonna show you cooking Wagyu, why I only cook Wagyu on skill, skillet tops. Only way to do it. All right, let's get cooking. Okay, here are our Wagyu New York strips. This is why I only cook Wagyu on skillet tops. This is what you're paying for with Wagyu, is all this marbling and this fat, I'm telling you, it is like butter, like butter. It is, like it's so melty and just delicious. Even just touching the steak, like you can feel the difference. I'm actually gonna cut off a little bit and we're gonna kinda use that as our cooking oil, believe it or not. We're gonna use that instead of oil because it's just so good. If you put this type of quality Wagyu steak on a grill, you're wasting it because all those fat drippings are going, they're evaporating, they're going down the grill. You want a solid surface that you can cook this on because you want that flat flavor in the grill because that's what you're paying for. All right, and then these have, again, that flat fat flavor, IMO, in my opinion. That's what IMO means, by the way. You don't wanna get cute with this. Here's a little tip. Only thing to season Wagyu steaks with, salt only. If you really want to, you could do some pepper, but in my opinion, it's not necessary. Also, you're gonna wanna sear these. So one thing we didn't bring up when it comes to heat on all the griddles is all the griddles get around 500 degrees or so, maybe a little bit hotter, but that's plenty hot for searing because you have to think you have 100% contact surface area. So even though it's only 500 degrees, the whole thing of what you're cooking is touching that heat, not just some of it. So. Not all heat is created equally and when you're talking about the difference between skillets and barbecues. 
All right, well, let me show you why this fat is like butter. So see, this just creates like a perfect, it renders down so good that you can just cook right on it. And that's gonna be basically our oil or our butter. Now some people would do butter, I personally wouldn't. It's, like I said, you don't wanna mess up. It's so good all by itself. All right, we ready? Now that's just gonna render down beautifully. Keep that one. That's all fat. It looks like oil, but that's just all fat from the steaks. Three things you should never do when cooking Wagyu. Cook it on a grill because you're gonna lose all the fat. You wanna keep the fat, so that's why we're cooking on a skillet. Number two, don't over season it with foo-foo stuff. These taste so good on their own, you don't want a bunch of stuff in it. This is just salt. And number three, don't overcook them. If you cook this to a medium well, you're in big trouble. Big trouble. All right, let's try a flip. A little flippy. Oh yeah, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Nice little crust. Let's pull these off. All right, we're gonna let these rest for a minute. Hopefully I didn't overcook them. They get away from you quick, so. We'll give them about five minutes, but check this out. See all this grease down, down in here? It's not grease, that's just fat. Now remember, we put no oils on this at all. This is all just from the steak. So you would lose all of that flavor if you cooked on a grill. That's why this goes on a skillet. All right, let's see how we did. You guys like that we have actual silverware now? We're not making these $80 steaks with plastic spoons and knives in the back corner. If you guys want to check out the video on this kitchen, uh, we'll include a link below so you can see it. All right, I like to cut in the middle to see how I did. Oh well, yeah, that's medium rare, all right. Dead center. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It's so juicy. Now, on a grill, it'd still be juicy, but you would lose a lot of that flavor. So that's why you don't want to buy a $50, 60 $70 steak and then dry it out on your grill. That's why skillet cooking is so good. So that's our top five skillet video. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. We'll see you guys next time.